Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. So we gather on this day that is dedicated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It's under the, our diocese is placed under the patronage of Mary and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So it's with great joy and, and wonder that we we gather to acknowledge and, and honour the great grace and gift of the maternal heart of Mary, calling us, inviting us into the love of the Son as we celebrated on Friday with the Sacred Heart. So as we begin, let's first acknowledge that we need the mercy of God and pray for the healing and forgiveness of our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Peace. 
taken from the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but the readings today will be of the 11th Sunday. Let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
To the crowds. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land, night and day, while he sleeps, when he is awake. The seed is sprouting and growing. How? He does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, What can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It's like a mustard seed, which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the birds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like these, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding it. He would not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. What can we say that the kingdom of God is like? Or to bring it a bit more locally, what can we say that it is to be a Christian? 
to be a parishioner at St. Columkills. What's that like? What does it mean? I mean, it's part of that process of the preparation for the plenary council. The church across our country is asking this question. What is the Holy Spirit saying to us today? How do we respond? And looking through some of the submissions so far, you know, there are very practical suggestions that are being made about how we can enhance the life of the parish, how we can make the life of our Catholic community to be richer and stronger. But that's not the kind of answer that Jesus offers. I mean, those practical things are, are very important, very significant. But Jesus doesn't seem to be too fussed. And even when he's using these images of farmers and seeds, he doesn't spend a lot of time talking about the land and the soil and the preparation and the watering and, and all of those things. He seems to focus on things that are much more hidden, things that happen not in the hustle and bustle, but in the silence. As he says, once the seed is planted, the farmer goes to bed at night, he sleeps. Then in the morning he, he wakes and goes about his ordinary day. But all of this background activity is happening. Sometimes we can be so caught up in the activity and the focus that we can lose the value of the silent and the hidden. I mean, in Mary, we see this profound sense, you know, in the Gospel of Luke, one of the things that is attributed to her is Mary pondering these things in her heart, pondering the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to, to be there, to be nurtured, to, to be evoked. The first place that Jesus is born, of course, is in her heart, in her life, in her silent ascent to God. And when the angel appeared to her, that was just the culmination of a whole series of yeses that she had made. These little shoots that had taken root within her life, these little seeds that had been planted within her, this ability to profoundly say yes to God. Our first reading today is, is, is quite marvelous. It's by the prophet Ezekiel. And in the year 597 BC, the Babylonians uh, invaded. They took siege of Jerusalem and defeated the city. But they allowed the, the city to remain in, in Jewish hands, kind of. They took into captivity the king of, of Israel, of Judah at that point, and all of the princes, all of the, the chief leaders of the people. And I appointed a puppet king to be the leader of Jerusalem at that time. And Ezekiel was one of the people that was taken in chains in exile back to Babylon. And when he begins the book of his prophecies in the book of, of Ezekiel, it's five years later, so around the year 592. And he's sitting by uh, an irrigation channel there in Babylon. And he's just pondering his situation. It's his 30th birthday. And back in Jerusalem, he'd been preparing to be a priest. And the 30th birthday would have been the day that he would have been consecrated and ordained to be a priest within the Jewish faith. And so all of that is, is lost as he's sitting there in exile, wondering what on earth is, is going on? What on earth is all this about? And in that moment, he receives a vision. And it's a vision of these strange four winged creatures with four different heads formed in an assembly with their wings touching each other and above this assemblage of these four creatures is this throne room and one like the son of man is seated there in all his glory and he realizes that he's seeing a very the very vision of the image of god but he's like i'm in babylon i'm in exile away from jerusalem surely the temple is still standing surely the, the glory of the Lord should be back in Jerusalem. But he sees that, no, that the people have, have apostatized. They've turned away from the Lord. They haven't been faithful to the little seeds of life 
and faith that have been planted within them. And so begins this series of prophecies that we read about in the first 11 chapters of the book of Ezekiel. And then he begins a series of prophecies from chapter 12 to 24 against Judah and against the people of Jerusalem and, and the surrounding areas. And our reading today is, is from that. And the 17th chapter, like the 16th chapter, you know, is full of woes and these terrible indictments against the people of, of Judah and Jerusalem. And so these three verses that are our reading today are about the only highlight, the only light moment in this otherwise depressing tale of the failures of the people. You know, so often we can see the failures, so often we can be overwhelmed by the things that have gone wrong in our world and in our society. But even in that darkness, there can be these little brief spells, there can be these little shoots of hope and joy and wonder. And Ezekiel sees this little stem that is planted and taken by the Lord from the very top of one of the cedars. And, you know, cedars don't bear fruit, but this tree miraculously, marvelously, indeed, bears fruit. Just as Mary, in her yes, in her absolute acceptance and surrender to God, bears that abundant fruit of being the mother of the Son of God, being the, the mother of our Savior. So for us, you know, not to grow discouraged, to know that sometimes it's in the silence of our hearts. It's just in the prayers that we make. It's in those little sacrifices and offerings that we make to God. It's in those places, in that moment, that God is doing his most profound and beautiful work. It's not necessarily in the showy and, mir and miraculous and marvelous you know, external events. It's in the little moments of fidelity. It's in those little experiences when we surrender and say yes to God. That's where the kingdom of God is to be found. That's where Jesus once again takes birth and finds life within our souls, within our hearts. Let's indeed be inspired by the example of Mary and give ourselves, give our hearts so faithfully, so fully to God and allow God's work to continue to call us into that fidelity today. The Lord wants to be a place where the people will find shelter, to be that shrub that comes from the smallest of seeds, to be a place where others are able to find nurturance and find life. So often, you know, the church can be thought of as a barren instrument. So much of, of this abundant fruit that has been handed on to us by past generations has been lost and squandered. And we need to accept that and realize that but we also need to, to see the signs of hope and to see those little seeds planted in silence, those little faithful seeds that continue to bear fruit. Let's pray that in our hearts, that in our lives, inspired by Mary, caught up in the love of Jesus, that we will also be faithful to God, that we also will give ourselves and surrender ourselves to the wonder of a God who continues to call us into life today. And let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was believed by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Like a great tree with flourishing branches, or like a seed quietly growing, so the kingdom of God increases. We make our prayers together as our share in that loving plan of divine providence. To the growing church on earth, that it may, be, it may welcome and redeem the cultures and values of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who plan to influence the economy, that they may encourage and support farmers and all those who help to bring food to our table. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who develop the land, 
that as they make this earth more productive, so may they reverence the natural environment created by God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, that we may grow in grace as we welcome people to the life of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, that they may live forever in the courts of our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the source of all goodness and grace. Hear these prayers we make as our intercession for others. Through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness through Christ our Lord. The first preface of the Blessed Virgin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, God and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven, and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your whole church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity with your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's turn and share with those around us the grace and peace of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we, who commemorate the mother of your Son, may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lots of different things in the bulletin this week, so please make sure you take home a copy of that. The Lord be with you. And so may the God of all life, the God of grace and goodness, the God who continues to make great things grow in the small, continue in the silence of your hearts to foster a love and devotion to Jesus. And may that blessing spread through you into your family and friends this week. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thank you.